on with our governor candidates. Nate, will you come on up? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's good to be back in Makokoda. Uh, I want to thank and acknowledge uh, State Senator Todd Bowman again. Uh, Todd was one of the earliest supporters of my campaign. You guys are in great hands with Todd Bowman as your state senator. We could use about six more Todd Bowmans in the Iowa Senate. Stand up for and, and a few Pam Yoakums too. Pam's my campaign chair. So. We, we've, got, we've got some great Democrats uh, from this area, and we've got to do everything we can to expand the lineup so we aren't in the same struggle again next year. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nate Bolton. I'm the state senator who represents East Des Moines and Pleasant Hill in the Iowa Senate. But I actually grew up just straight south of here in Columbus Junction. Uh, it's a small town in southeast Iowa, about 2,000 people. Uh, my dad came out of Bandag Tire Plant in Muscatine. He's now the statewide director for the Steelworkers Union. My grandfather, his father, spent 20 years at Rath Packing House in Columbus Junction as a chief union steward uh, standing up for workers there. Uh, my mom and stepdad actually still live on a heritage farm just outside of Columbus Junction. I'm very proud of that upbringing, and I'm proud to do my part standing up for workers. I've done it for 12 years as a workers' rights attorney, representing workers injured on the job, people who lose their job through no fault of their own because of the color of their skin or their disabilities or their age. I've represented victims of sexual harassment in the workplace, and I've represented labor unions trying to get fair contracts for the, works that I, the work that Iowa workers do. When I ran for the Iowa Senate, it was with the goal of furthering that mission, that, that mission to increase the quality of life for working Iowans. But of course, when I got there, we had Terry Branstad and Kim Reynolds mm -hmm. with full control of state government, and really with an incredible opportunity to do some great things for our state. Think about the incredible opportunity that comes with having full control of state government. They could have done the things they campaigned on, like creating 200,000 new jobs or increasing earnings for Iowans by 25%. They just forgot both of those bills this last year, right? What did we see instead? We saw an agenda that fixated on holding back and taking away. They did it at every turn. They told those answering the sacred call of public service, our teachers, our firefighters, our police officers, our public health nurses, our road workers and social workers, that they are entitled to lesser and fewer rights in the workplace than every other worker in our state because they answer that call of public service. They decreased access to quality health care for Iowa women. They've privatized Medicaid. They shut down two of our state's four mental health facilities doing nothing to replace the lost services. They've made a mess of our budget. They've raided rainy day funds. They have gone through mid-year budget cuts and permanent budget cuts. We've lost over a thousand DHS workers during the Branstead Reynolds administration at a time when we've had two children die of starvation. Yeah. I talked to a man who was in the Clorinda, whose brother was in the Clorinda facility for mental health at the time it was closed down. Within three weeks, his brother was dead because there was literally nowhere for him to go. They had to put him in a nursing home. No replacement for the 24-7 supervision and care. At a time when we know we need to do more, not less, for access to health care, and in particular mental health, this administration has restricted access and put a, a privatized Medicaid scheme that has threatened the health security of Iowans, has made it hard for providers to make ends meet, meaning they'll scale back their services further and further. Even the managed care organizations are saying that they can't survive this system. Look at where their priorities are. And they're bragging about these things. Yeah, Kim Reynolds, in her condition of the state address, bragged about that public sector bargaining bill and her infliction of more pain beyond it by telling 2,800 state workers they're no longer going to see overtime pay for overtime work. She bragged about a workers' compensation bill that actually made it harder for workers to recover for their lost earning capacity. She bragged about how we fund education in this state. That's going to be news to a lot of teachers. Think about what they, they, they believe these things are achievements. When she was asked about their budget cuts, she said there's no loss in services because of their budget cuts. They eliminated all the funding for the Leopold Center. They eliminated so many different things in the state. To, to have this 
this idea that somehow the same level of service is being provided by departments that have been wholly eliminated is absurd. But you're never going to fix problems if you don't believe they exist. And Todd Bowman and I have been on the front lines fighting them every step of the way on these things that have been so hurtful to our state, that have shown the wrong priorities. We were there fighting all through the night. Uh, I was proud to lead Senate Democrats till they literally shut off my microphone yeah. on that public sector bargaining bill. Thank you. Thank you. I truly believe it. I believe this 2018 election is a fight for the soul of our state. We're going to determine Iowa's long-term future with what happens in this election. But we're not going to win that by simply talking about the things we are against. Because yes, we've shown we have steel in our spine, resolve in our spirit, and we stood up to this agenda. But if we have the opportunity, we have to share with every single Iowan, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, that their livelihood, their way of life is on the ballot. And we have a positive vision forward. Think about what Iowa can look like if instead of threatening the security of the retirement of public employees in the IPER system, we actually expand opportunities for retirement investment for Iowa workers. I proposed a Retirement Savings Iowa bill that would act, give access to public managed retirement for people in, in small and local uh, uh, employee situations. I post, pushed a, an equal pay amendment uh, for, for us to, to do everything we can to equalize the wage gap in our state. Uh, I proposed paid family leave, a benefit that can help. Thank you, yes. Applaud <laughs> that if you like. Uh, but, but we can have paid family leave. As we talk about the skilled workforce we need for the next generation to stay in Iowa and recruiting it to Iowa, we have to lead the nation in these things. We can push forward for wage growth. We can better take care of our natural resources. I'm very proud of the work my wife Andrea does. She's a statewide director for trails for the Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation. Uh, I'll relay that applause to her. Uh, but I'm very proud of the work she does, because think about what Iowa can do for tourism and economic development. We've got a great network of trails across our state. We can engage people in natural resource tourism into Iowa if we take care of our natural resources. And that's why I've proposed uh, the Iowa Water, Water and Land Legacy Trust Fund yeah. be funded as Iowa voters have asked. Yeah. We can lead the nation into renewable energy. We get about a third of our energy from renewable resources. We answer the problem of climate change by creating quality Iowa economic development jobs with Iowa built wind turbines and Iowa solar technologies. Those are the things we can do. We can rebuild Iowa's rural infrastructure. As they toss out $20 million in coupons to Apple, the largest corporation on the planet, we could have invested that $20 million in 260 Main Street, Iowa grants, leveraging local resources for Iowa's long-term future. So that's what I'm here to tell you. I've traveled to 99 counties in this campaign. I'm proud to be supported by labor unions representing over 100,000 Iowa workers. I'm proud to have the support of 23 of my House and Senate colleagues because we are ready for a better path forward. We're not going to be able to secure Iowa's future by accident or by default. We have to be deliberate about it. We have to be conscious of our opportunities. We have to take them. We have to plan for Iowa's future. It takes leadership. I'm running because we need a new generation of leadership here in our party and here in our state. I'd love to have your support. Thank you very much.